Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. Well, today is the last in a three-part series that I'm doing on the sorry state of education in the United States. Part one was called The Broken System. Part two was The Results of the Broken System. And you can see that there are links for both of those in my description box below. Please feel free to go and watch them. Today is the third and final part, Fixing the Broken System. Now, to recap the first two parts, as I pointed out in my first of the series, The Broken System, our schools are now churning out nothing but illiterate ignorami. We now have an entire generation, and well into our second, who can neither read nor write nor perform the most basic math. Now, the reasons for this are somewhat complex. I went into them in detail in part one. I certainly encourage you to watch that one. But to recap, here is what our basic problem has been all along. About 100 years ago, if you were a teacher, you needed to have about this level of education in order to do your job. However, those, that generation of teachers said to themselves, you know, there's things in the curriculum that just don't make sense, like teaching Latin. That's a dead language. Why should we teach that? And so they took it out of the curriculum. Well, that resulted in the next generation of teachers not being as educated. And then they said to themselves, you know, there's things in here that don't make sense. Let's take it out of the curriculum, like advanced mathematics, which resulted in the next generation of teachers learning even less. And they took things out of the curriculum, resulting in the next generation learning less. And they took things out of the curriculum, which resulted in roughly where we are now, where we have some teachers, a fair number, who are themselves illiterate ignorami. We have the blind leading the blind. They are illiterate, so they cannot teach anything to anyone. Now, in part two, excuse me. I went over what students now learn since they are no longer taught any useful skills in order to survive in life. In brief, they are being indoctrinated to believe in communist and socialist philosophies that will inevitably, inevitably result in the deaths of innocent people. Always remember, at schools past in my lower third, socialism and communism always fail, killing millions of innocent people in the process. Now, when we come to fixing this broken system, we must, to some extent, lay some blame. Whose fault is it that things got to the degree where it has now? Well, to my shame, the fault lies largely with baby boomers and my generation. My generation in particular should have demanded immediate radical changes the moment that we realized what was going on. There was really no excuse not to. I knew it needed to be done. But like many people my age, I was busy raising children, earning enough money to pay for cars and a mortgage to give it as much thought as I should have. We all rather naively and frankly stupidly thought it would work itself out in the end. What we really didn't consider was how wrong we could be. The system as it stands now cannot be salvaged because we have no longer any particularly literate teachers. What they don't know would just about fill the Grand Canyon. As they are near illiterate and out, sometimes outright illiterate themselves, they cannot teach anything to anyone. The system as it stands cannot be reformed. Radical and immediate changes are necessary. Now, in the first place, our first major radical change is that government must be removed from education. This particularly includes the federal government. The Department of Education didn't even exist prior to the Reagan administration. Those of you who are conservatives in my audience, remember, it was Ronald Reagan who created the Department of Edu the Secretary and Department of Education. It did not exist before him. The man that you champion as your perfect savior, he helped screw it up. And all of the policies of that department have only made things worse. And in any case, there is no language in the Constitution that authorizes the federal government to be involved in education in any way, neither through funding, curriculum, standardized testing, student loans, or any other program. It is, therefore, under the Tenth Amendment, education is reserved to the states or the people. You must also 
and this is the biggest and most radical change. All teachers, instructors, and professors in K-12 all the way through Ph.D. level college professors at all colleges, all universities, and all schools must be summarily fired and replaced with no one. In the first place, they are uniformly communists and socialists passing on these deadly ideas to our children, and they cannot be reformed. And in the second place, they are themselves near illiterate or outright illiterate and outright ignorami, incapable of teaching anything to anyone, and they cannot be retrained at this point in their lives. When it comes to potential replacements. Well, with government taken out of education, particularly the federal government, many solutions become possible. Now, I'm going to suggest one that makes sense to me, but there are no doubt many others that you could think of that would work out equally as well. I would certainly suggest trying everything and anything, <laughs> anything that is different from what we're doing now. So my solution would be, you take individuals from within the private sector, such as mine, because I was in IT for 40 years, and you hire them on an adjunct basis. And that means that all teachers, all professors are adjuncts taken from the field in which they work in order to teach what they know. They should be paid a small amount, and it wouldn't have to be much, to leave their jobs for a couple of hours a day and teach both K through 12 classes and college courses. Nor should it be limited solely to IT professionals, but should also include things like CPAs to teach economics, statistical scientists to teach mathematics, astronomers to teach astronomy, and so on. As long as they are working in their field and working in the private sector, they should be allowed to teach what they know. And you'd be surprised at the breadth that most of them have. Now, as an example of what I can personally teach, and I know that I can do this because in addition to being in IT for 40 years, I also taught for three years at a junior college that I named in my first part of this video, but I will always otherwise consider the place that shall not be named. And I know what I can teach. And I can personally teach reading through the college level, English composition through the third grade level. And I stop there simply because I can't diagram sentences. I can teach writing through the college level, American literature through the K through 12 level, math through the calculus level, which, by the way, should be available to advanced students in high school. I could teach any IT subject, that's for certain. Hardware through the college level, networking technologies through the college level, programming in various languages through the introductory level. I was never a programmer. And all of these, all of these subjects should be available to advanced students in high school. I can also teach American history through the college level, world history through the middle school level, civics through the college level, French through the college level, theater at the K through 12 level because I was once an actor and I can teach acting, stagecraft, direction, and I can produce student productions again through the K through 12 level. And believe it or not, you might not know it to look at me right now, but I can also teach weightlifting with an emphasis on bodybuilding through the college level. And I am, in fact, presently following a bodybuilding regime that's intended to remove some of the pounds that I have allowed to accumulate as fat as I get older into muscle mass. And I am seeing results already after only a couple of months. And I am absolutely certain that employers would love to allow their educated employees to leave their jobs for a couple of hours a day to teach because employers need an educated workforce. Today, the only thing that a college graduate can reliably do is flip burgers. And boy, did that graduate, graduate pay through the nose for that negligible skill. And that is another thing that is easily fixed, the cost of education. The reason tuition is so expensive is because the federal government guarantees loans. And that means that regardless of whether a student is capable of passing a course or has the money to pay for an education, the federal government will still pay the institution. Colleges and universities get the money regardless of whether the student actually has it or can actually pass the course. 
Consequently, colleges and universities admit any warm body at any price that they wish to charge because regardless of whether that student passes or fails, the federal government still pays the college or university whatever exorbitant tuition that they choose to charge. If the responsibility for student loans is returned to the student, as it was, by the way, up until through when I got my degrees, Colleges and universities will accept only those people who can pass and then lower the tuition to fit what a student can reasonably pay. And that is all that I have to say about that subject for today and pretty much all that I have to say about education. I certainly welcome your input in my comments and if it looks like I need to talk about it some more, I certainly will. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you will watch the other two parts of these, uh, this series. Part 1, The Broken System. Part 2, The Results of the Broken System, both of which are linked to in my description box below. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same, and to share me on social media. I would certainly appreciate your support via Subscribestar, my PayPal tip jar, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all three in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch, the place where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.